Joanna, and she is many things, actually. She is the Vice President and Lab Director of IBM Research Australia and is the Chief Technology Officer of IBM Australia and New Zealand. She just gave a really good keynote uh, talking all about a whole bunch of machine learning and the cognitive era, which was actually really fascinating and has made me even more inspired to go and work on Bluemix more and start tinkering with IBM Watson. So it, you did cool. your job well. <laughs> Great. Um, so my first question uh, is hopefully a fun one. Uh, there's a lot happening in the realm of machine learning uh, and AI. Some of it is more advanced than others. You know, we've got the small things of you know, chatbots, which have been around for ages, but seem to be kind of ramping up again as the big thing. And then we've got really a lot more advanced stuff, like uh, machine learning, which is working out how to colorize black and white images, and the things that you've mentioned, where it's trying to detect melanoma cells and stuff through the imaging. Right. There's all this stuff happening. But what is the key areas of growth in these areas that you think are key to the real, I guess, real world benefit and true change rather than like the small stuff what's like the really big areas that you think are going to change the world i guess in some way or another when you talk about technology i think one of the changes we've seen recently is the adoption of deep learning technologies <laughs> right in these deep convolutional neural nets yeah uh, for me and, and particularly with my background in healthcare healthcare really is the industry that i think will see the most societal benefits yeah um, it's not just about the huge amounts of data, it's about the way that you can interpret the data. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? And so because it's both important for the human population as well as an area where the data volumes are so huge that the technology can have such a transformative effect, mm. that for me is the industry where we'll see the most rapid changes. I think that sounds pretty likely, to be honest. Yeah. And like, really, if you're helping people's health get better, that is... I guess more important than almost anything, if you can help people's, I guess, way of life improve and detect illness and stuff a lot earlier, that is a pretty right. strong thing, so yeah. And it's not just about treatment, right? It's about this whole notion of wellness that yeah. you mentioned, right? Wellness and prevention. It mm. actually spawns new industries. Yeah. The industry of, of athletics with mm. healthcare. Right? We've been doing some interesting work with Under Armour, one of our partners, where you can monitor the fitness and wellness of mm. a sports team. In fact, Rod Smith also mentioned earlier today yeah. work we've been doing with the USA Cycling Team. So wellness and health and fitness all come together yes. and generate this real opportunity to transform the way we live. Yeah, that's excellent. OK, well, because DevDiner is really focused a lot on developers who are more likely to be in the field where they're interested in getting into machine learning mm -hmm. and they're hearing a lot about it, where would you recommend they start? If they have a little bit of idea about it, but they kind of want to do something and get into it, but they don't know where to start, where should they start? So a couple of, a couple of areas, right? Um, if, they, if they're students at university, mm -hmm. uh, many of the universities these days are sponsoring hackathons. Ah, yes. You've probably been involved in hackathons. Mm -hmm. Uh, we, with our Bluemix platform and our Watson Developer Cloud platform, we've already published a lot of APIs in our Watson Developer Cloud. Yeah. And so we run hackathons, often in partnership with a major industry client, uh, but also with a set of universities. Yeah. And that hackathon experience over a two or three day long weekend is really a great hands-on programming experience yeah. where you can take a business idea, some technology, uh, take somebody else's APIs, glue them together, choreograph a new solution. Mm -hmm. You're learning at the same time that you're building something. Yeah, and you're around a whole got bunch of people who also got the same goals and yes. interests. You can all help out as well. Exactly. Which is great. Exactly. Yeah. That's awesome. That I think is the same. Like we had a similar answer as well. So hackathons actually seem to be the really good way of learning. Yes, we've Everybody's just done. Really keen. We've just done a hackathon uh, with a bank around uh, some data science use cases. Mm -hmm. We actually have an interesting hackathon, a series of hackathons coming up around blockchain. Oh, right, excellent! For people who want to learn about blockchain, yeah. uh, join a hackathon. Yeah. Uh, we had a great hackathon last year. Uh, where we were looking at um, solutions for the aging population. If you think about Australia yeah. and China and Japan, there's a very large percentage of, of an increasingly aging population. Yeah. Can you prototype very rapidly during the course of a weekend hackathon new solutions for the aging population? Yeah, which would be brilliant. Excellent. Okay. Well, let's go to. 
Ah, yeah. Okay. So IBM Watson. It's mm -hmm. being used in a whole bunch of different areas now. I'm very excited by the Sesame Street partnership, um, particularly myself. Uh, but what is your personal favorite use of Watson so far? That's personal happened out favorite there? use. Yeah. So one of, one of my favorites is, again, it comes back to healthcare, mm -hmm. but it comes back to some work that we did with the Baylor College of Medicine, mm -hmm. where whenever you develop new technology like Watson or cognitive computing, people say, well, prove to me that you can find new insights. Yeah. Right? So it's not a search engine. We're often asked, right, is Watson a search engine? It's not a search engine. It's about inference and learning and reason. Yeah. So you need to be able to establish that you can, in fact, drive new insights from data that other traditional techniques have not found. Yeah. And so we did a piece of work around our Watson Discovery Advisor for Life Sciences initiative with, with a university hospital to understand, could we identify new peptides in their yeah. data sets? And could yeah. we identify new targets for potential drugs of the future? Yeah. And as we did that retroactive data analysis, we found new insights. Excellent. And that was that was really exciting. That's what you want to happen. That is that's perfect. Cool. I like that. All right. Then one thing that I'd like to leave everything with, like the way I like to end each interview, is to leave it really open. Mm -hmm. To just say, okay, so you've got a developer watching right now. What's the one thing that you'd like to leave them with? that they can take away from this interview and just keep in their mind is the last thing that they remembered. What would you like them to know? I would say focus on understanding how to build new neural net models with deep mm -hmm. learning techniques. Uh, lots of those uh, techniques are available today in open source software. Mm -hmm. Contribute to the world of open source. Uh, start programming in MATLAB. Start programming and building your own convolutional neural nets. That deep learning is really transforming the way that we think about machine learning, and that's a very exciting application space. Cool. Excellent. Well, thank you so much. You're welcome. It was nice a pleasure. to meet you.